Welcome to episode 392 of the Selling Your Screenplay podcast. I'm actually Scott Myers, screenwriter and blogger at sellingyourscreenplay.com. Today I am interviewing producer Suzanne De Laurentiis, who's doing a new show called Suzanne's Saturday Night Scares, which showcases classic horror films. She talks about that briefly, but Suzanne is also a seasoned producer, and we dig into a number of her projects, how she found the scripts, how she's hired writers in the past, and ultimately how she's got some of these projects produced. So stay tuned for that interview. Interview. If you find this episode valuable, please help me out by giving me a review in iTunes or leaving a comment on YouTube or retweeting the podcast on Twitter or liking or sharing it on Facebook. These social media shares really do help spread word about the podcast, so they're very much appreciated. Any websites or links that I mentioned in the podcast can be found on my blog in the show notes. I also publish a transcript with every episode in case you'd rather read the show or look at something later on. You can find all the podcast show notes at www.sellingyourscreenplay.com slash podcast, and then just look for episode number 392. If you want my free guide, how to sell a screenplay in five weeks, you can pick that up by going to sellingyourscreenplay.com slash guide. It's completely free. You just put in your email address and I'll send you a new lesson once per week for five weeks along with a bunch of bonus lessons. I'll teach the whole process of how to sell your screenplay in that guide. I'll teach you how to write a professional logline and career letter and how to find agents, managers, and producers who are looking for material. Really is everything you need to know to sell your screenplay. Just go to sellingyourscreenplay.com slash guide. So a quick few words about what I'm working on. I just recently launched a new actor podcast, which is quite similar to SYS, except obviously it's for actors. You can check that out by going to therightcast.com. I've got two episodes up so far and we'll try and post, you know, roughly one episode a month. I'm thinking I'll go for six months or a year, just see if I can get some traction with it. It's very nuts and bolts like SYS, only it's specifically for actors trying to help them find auditions and get and book more gigs. I've met um, so many awesome people through SYS. I thought this would be a great way to network a bit with actors. Um, on the first episode of the podcast, I have Victoria DeMar, who I worked with on my last film, The Ride Chair Killer. She talks about her career. She's done some great um, horror films and um, talks about that. Really, this is the nitty gritty of how she's able to sort of keep her career going. And then on the second episode, I have Christopher Showerman, um, who was George of who was George in George of the Jungle sequel. Um, so if you're interested in hearing any of this or if any of this sounds um, like something you might like to check out, once again, just go over to therightcast.com and um, and check that out. And if you don't mind too, if you like it, please give me a review wherever you listen to it, whether it be iTunes or or YouTube or, or just on the site, um, you know, leave a comment. I always like to hear what um, people are thinking about it. Um, I've been talking about the film noir detective mystery project for a while now. I think we finally have the script kind of where we want it. So I ended up just selling the script to the actor producer who wants it as a starring vehicle for himself. He has a producer friend who he was going to work with to produce it, but I think the friend had some health issues. So now he's coming back to me and talking to me about possibly producing it. He wants to direct it and possibly wants me to produce it. Um, so there's still some things that need to be worked out, but um, the script is sold and um, and we're starting to, to gear up for pre-production. And, um, and as I said, right now, I think I'm probably going to be the producer on the project or at least one of the producers on the project. Interestingly, this is an actor I met through my last film, The Ride Chair Killer. You know, we just got to know each other. And um, obviously, he's an actor, has done a bunch of stuff, and um, just got to talk to him. That was a writer and started to show him some of my scripts. Um, he's, actors are always looking for, for cool projects for themselves. He was, he was looking for a cool project for himself as well. People always ask about networking. And as you know, I'm a big proponent of getting out there and doing stuff. And this, to me, is an example of that working. I met at someone who ended up buying a screenplay from me and all because I decided to go and make my movie The Rideshare Killer. One of the things that I find with networking, you know, I, over the years, I've done just like most people, I go to those networking events, you know, those things where you go to some event and maybe someone speaks and then you try and network afterwards. Um, and I've honestly never met a single person um, that became any kind of like a real contact. Um, so I don't know, maybe I'm just not good at those types of things, but I have found working on projects, um, you know, doing stuff, you kind of just meet a whole bunch of people. Some of them you click with, some of you don't. But if you do enough of these types of things, you know, I think this is sort of a, a good example of um, getting out there and meeting people. And again, it all really just came down to um, my film, The Rideshare Killer. Anyways, those are the things I've been working on. Let's get into the main segment. 
Today, I am interviewing producer Suzanne De Laurentiis. Here is the interview. Welcome, Suzanne, to the Selling Your Screenplay podcast. I really appreciate you coming on the show with me today. Oh, well, it's certainly a pleasure to be here, Ashley. Thank you for having me. Hey, thank you. So to start out, maybe you can tell us a little bit about your background. Where did you grow up and how did you get interested in the entertainment business? Well, my family was in the business. I'm from New Jersey originally. And um, actually, my cousin was Frankie Avalon. So oh, wow. I, started out as a, <laughs> I started out as a singer uh, working in the entertainment business in the 70s. And then in the late 70s, early 80s, I switched to working in film. Um, and then my um, other distant cousin was Dino De Laurentiis. So I always followed the entertainment business and it was kind of in my family. Yeah, yeah. So let's talk about some of the transitions. Um, so you, you were a singer, then you got more into acting. I mean, I think you've done a ton as a producer as well. How did you make those changes and, and what sort of precipitated those changes? Like, why did you go from acting to producing? Well, as you know, it's tough for women in front of the camera. You know, it can be very hard. And in the late 70s, I not that I was frustrated, but it just seemed so challenging, always relying on being in front of the camera and people casting you in their projects. So I started creating my own projects. And mm -hmm. in doing that, I learned producing and directing. I pretty much worked every crew position um, on a film set. And then it was important to me to have a little more control over my fate. So mm -hmm. I really enjoyed having my own company and creating my own projects. So it, it was a natural um, kind of a natural progression for me, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds like it. So let's talk briefly about some of your projects. Um, and to start, I thought maybe Middleton Christmas would be a good one. Um, you're a producer and a writer. So maybe we can just talk about that briefly. Um, you have a story by credit on that. What does that actually mean? You're the producer. Was it an idea you came up with and then you hired some writers? Um, but maybe talk mm -hmm. us through that. How did that project come about and sort of what was your role in it? Right. So basically, Middleton Christmas, as well as a lot of the other films that I've done, I pretty much come up with the premise and the idea and an outline. And then I go to the different writers that I work with and work with them to come up with a screenplay. And Middleton Christmas was just sort of one of those kind of a passion project. We were working with some organ donor people and we you know, wanted to come up with some sort of Christmas holiday drama that also raised awareness for organ donors and organ donor associations. Oh, I got you. And so does that actually come into the financing of the film? Um, the organ don't like these, these sorts of organizations help finance this thing. No, they didn't. We have a group of private investors that we use on a lot of our projects. We've gotcha. I've always done um, independent films as with private mm -hmm. investors and private money. And then afterwards we do an acquisition deal, whether it's with a studio or, you know, whoever the, uh, the sales party may be. So we do things as an independent with private money. Gotcha. Gotcha. So let's talk, you just mentioned that this is Middleton Christmas was very typical of your sort of template coming up with the idea of hiring a writer mm -hmm. and a director. Um, so on Middleton mm -hmm. Christmas, for instance, maybe you can give us like a specific example. How did you find Trisha Arand? And I noticed before she did Middleton Christmas, she had only done some shorts. So it wasn't like she had a huge track record, but maybe you can talk through that. Cause I know there's, I get writers all the time. You know, how do I sort of just get in the, the eyes of these producers? Um, so maybe you can talk through that specific case. Well, I can tell you with Trisha, first of all, she's extremely talented. She's mm -hmm. done a lot of adaptations from books. And she was actually referred to me from Stephen Ravel, who was the Oscar nominee for Nixon and Ali. And we had done a couple of projects with him in the past. And I guess she had done some ghost writing and some intern writing with him. And he referred her to me and said, hey, listen, I've got this other great writer that I work with that I kind of mentor. And I'd like to get some other opportunities for her. I think she would be a great fit for some of your other projects. And that's how we ended up hiring her. Mm -hmm. And maybe you can talk about, so what did she actually submit? What did you read of hers? Did she have a, a feature spec? Was it in the same genre as Middleton Christmas? Um, did you look at some of the shorts? Like what did I, exactly did you like look at to, to decide if she was a good fit for it? Well, actually she was doing some additional writing on the Stephen Ravel project we have called Triangle Fire about oh, okay. the infamous shirtwaist factory fire in 1911. So we were already working with her on some other things and she was just very talented. And, you know, and I need to stress for sort of the screenwriting audience that, you know, I know your podcast appeals to. It's always so important as a writer to be good to work with and be willing to collaborate and take notes and listen, because I find with a lot of writers, especially new writers, 
sometimes, you know, they tend to kind of have that tunnel vision and, you know, at times they can become difficult to work with. And, you know, I always try to remind writers that, you know, you really, your creative vision is extremely important, but you're also collaborating and working with others that, you know, technically are taking the risk or the financial risk of the project. So it's really important to, you know, to listen to them and be a team player. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, very, very good advice for sure. So I'm curious on some of your other projects. Maybe we could talk through that. Derailed is another one. Um, you had the same director from Middleton Christmas. How did you meet um, Dale? Um, and maybe you can just walk us through that as a director. How did he come into your um, sort of orbit? I was actually introduced to Dale about 10 years ago from a friend of mine that, you know, had been pitching to him, him to me for quite a while about what a talented um, director he was. And we did a couple of smaller projects together. I really liked his work. He always had a great eye. He was very talented. He was awesome to work with. Again, I always have to stress that to people mm -hmm. that that's so important, you know, that you're mm -hmm. good to work with. You're not combative and difficult. And, you know, it, it, to me, as a producer, it's, it's always important to work with people that I like. I think sometimes people lose vision of that. Um, so he was great to work with. I liked him very much. He was very talented and I was always happy with the end result of everything that we, you know, mm -hmm. that we would get after, you know, after he would turn the film in. So, we, you know, we've worked on quite a few things. Derailed was, again, kind of a passion project. We wanted to do something that was a little more artsy, kind of horror and different where we, you know, kind of combined a couple different genres. So um, mm -hmm. Derailed was definitely different and a challenge. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm curious too, I'm friends with Lloyd Barnett and you executive produced a film that he did um, I Love You to Death and I remember years ago when he was doing the film um, he sort of told me I think how he met you and maybe you can talk through that a little bit I don't think you guys had like a relationship before that film correct me if I'm wrong but really what I'm getting at is just you know to show writers how they can get in, in the orbit of a producer and again this is something that I'm familiar with with I Love You to Death so maybe you can talk through that one as well and is that sort of typical of how you find people Right. Well, listen, Lloyd was very talented and he brought the movie to me. I have a lot of people sometimes that are just, you know, kind of up and coming or breaking into the business mm -hmm. and they'll make something or bring something to me. And I'll look at it and say, oh, my gosh, this is, you know, I, I love your vision, but this could be so much better if we just did this or did that or tweak this or fix this or fix that. And, you know, that's what we kind of did with Lloyd's project. And then we sort of made what he did so much better with, with him. And again, it's, uh, it's about being open and, you know, having open ears and be willing to collaborate and work with mm -hmm. other people that, you know, can really make you shine. And Lloyd was great at that. You know, he was thrilled to have us working with him and helping him to, you know, kind of take it to that next step. So let's talk about your new project, Suzanne's Saturday Night Scares. Maybe you can kind of give us the pitch. What is this new project all about? <laughs> this is my retirement project. Um, you know, I, I, was, I was trying to come up with something, you know, I'm, I'm pushing 60, unfortunately. And, um, you know, as my later years of my career, I was trying to come up with something that was a little, you know, a little less stressful, a little more fun, something a little more low key that, you know, really sort of showed my passion for, for horror movies, which mm -hmm. I, I, you know, love the genre, a huge passion for I spoke with my friend, um, Lee Turner, who is a host and writer and a lawyer for a show. Uh, it's like a, how can I explain it? Kind of like, um, you know, like a late night show where he mm -hmm. does wrap around for independent horror films. Okay. So I spoke to him about my idea and he wrote the show and I just loved it. I was thrilled. Um, After Hours Cinema, that's the name of the, the show. So. I wanted to do something a little different than kind of the Elvira thing, which, by the way, I love her show. She's amazing. Um, but, you know, being a director and a producer and a writer, I, I didn't want to come off as sort of being, you know, just a host that was sitting in front of the camera and reading. You mm -hmm. know, I wanted to kind of show that background of having the, you know, the directing and writing experience and the knowledge of, of you know, sort of the horror genre so, you know, we came up with the show and I'm just thrilled to be doing it. It's a ton of fun. Um, and, uh, you know, I hope everybody enjoys it. It's all classic horror films from the 60s and 70s. And then we have special guests on the show that either were in that film or hmm. films, you know, of the similar genre. Yeah. Yeah. And do you know some of the films that you guys are going to be showing? 
I don't want to let on. Gotcha. Because <laughs> that's part of the surprise. Is oh, that, okay. You know, well, what, Watch the weekly show. Um, but we just did Sisters of Death, the Messiah of Evil, and we had okay. uh, Laura Parker as a guest and Morgan Fairchild, and we've got quite a few other surprises coming. But again, I'm a huge fan of Elvira and her show, and I'm hoping that you know we have some of uh, those audience demographics as well. Gotcha, gotcha. How can people see it? Um, where is it going to air? It's on Amazon right now and Apple TV, and then it'll be up on five or six more platforms within the next month. Gotcha, gotcha. I'd like to end these interviews just by asking the guests um, if they've seen anything recently that they thought was really great. Um, is there anything that maybe you think writers could really take a look at, Netflix, HBO, anything that's come out recently that um, you maybe was a little under the radar? You know, I just have to say I binge watch everything, and there are so many great shows now my gosh it doesn't matter what your genre is uh, whether it's the girlfriend experience or euphoria or um there, there's just it's that's a hard question to answer there are just so many shows mm -hmm. but i think i always tell writers you know kind of write where your passion is where your heart is and, you know, really stand by, you know, what you like and what you believe in. And somebody will notice. It takes mm -hmm. time, but somebody will notice if you really write from the heart. Yeah, yeah. Is there anything as a producer you're seeing the marketplace change that maybe you could give a little advice to writers? Are there some changes, um, maybe particular genres that are coming out of favor or coming up? Maybe just the format, the longer form versus the shorter form. Is there anything in, that you're seeing with all of the, the sea change in these different outlets like Hulu and Netflix and how it's going to affect writers? Well, I'll tell you what's interesting. I've, I've been speaking to a lot of my studio head friends and kind of picking their brain and saying, you know, what are people looking for? What are they looking for for writers right now? <clears throat> and a lot of them have been telling me the same thing. They were looking for Afro-American suspense thrillers hmm. um, was the hot topic genre for them right now. Um, also, art house films, that seems to be making a big comeback. Huh. So um, those two, two seem to be popular genres right now that a lot of the platforms and the studios are looking for. Gotcha. Gotcha. What's the best way for people to keep up with what you're doing? Twitter, Facebook, a blog, anything you're comfortable sharing, I'll round up for the show notes so people can click over to it. Oh, sure. Facebook. It's just Suzanne D. Laurentis. My name, um, uh, Facebook for the show is SSN, Suzanne Saturday Night Scares. Uh, we're on Instagram as well, both okay. under the same. Perfect. Perfect. Well, Suzanne, I really appreciate you coming on and talking, talking with me today. Good luck with this new project and um, good luck with all your future projects as well. Thanks so much, Ashley. It's a pleasure. Hey, thank you. We'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye-bye. I just want to talk quickly about SYS Select. It's a service for screenwriters to help them sell their screenplays and get writing assignments. The first part of the service is the SYS Select Screenplay Database. Screenwriters upload their screenplays along with a logline, synopsis, and other pertinent information like budget and genre, and then producers search for and hopefully find screenplays they want to produce. Dozens of producers are in the system looking for screenplays right now. There have been a number of success stories come out of the service. You can find out about all the SYS Select successes by going to sellingyourscreenplay.com slash success. Also on SYS podcast, podcast episode 222, I talk with Steve Deering, who was the first official success story to come out of the SYS Select database. When you join SYS Select, you get access to the screenplay database along with all the other services that we're providing to SYS Select members. These services include the newsletter. This monthly newsletter goes out to a list of over 400 producers who are actively seeking writers and screenplays. Each SYS Select member can pitch one screenplay in this monthly newsletter. We also provide screenwriting leads. We have partnered with one of the premier paid screenwriting leads services so I can syndicate their leads to SYS Select members. There are lots of great paid leads coming in each week from our partner. Recently, we've been getting five to 10 high quality paid leads per week. These leads run the gamut. There's producers looking for a specific type of spec script to producers looking to hire a screenwriter to write up one of their ideas or properties. They're looking for shorts, features, TV, and web series pilots, all types of projects. If you sign up for SYS Select, you'll get these leads emailed directly to you several times per week. Also, you get access to the SYS Select forum where we will help you with your logline and query letter and answer any screenwriting related questions that you might have. We also have a number of screenwriting classes that are recorded and available in the SYS Select forum. These classes, these are all the classes that I've done over the years. So you'll have access to those 
whenever you want once you join. The classes cover every part of writing your screenplay from concept to outlining to the first act, second act, third act, as well as other topics like writing short films and pitching your projects in person. Once again, if this sounds like something you'd like to learn more about, please go to sellingyourscreenplayselect.com. Again, that is sellingyourscreenplayselect.com. On the next episode of the podcast, I'm going to be interviewing producer Gary W. Goldstein, who was one of the original producers on Pretty Woman. We talk about that a little bit, how he discovered that writer and ultimately helped that writer develop the script. And he's gone on to do lots of other films, including Under Siege, The Mothman Prophecies. He's a great networker. And in fact, he is networking actually by being on my podcast, um, networking with me. We talk a lot about networking and specifically cold calling, which he's done a lot of throughout his career. Um, um, he's very confident doing, has a lot of good tips, um, but it's a great interview just hearing how he built his career. Again, just through networking, cold calling, and just slowly just building a network of people that he knew and um, ultimately getting some of these projects produced. So keep an eye out for that episode next week. That's our show. Thank you for listening.